Okay, so I wanted to give a quick update uh, as to where I'm at with the transportation workbench. Um, it's it's been kind of a long road just trying to get this one function implemented. Um, I've had to I've ended up having to do a lot of linear geometry and things like that, uh, going back to stuff that I haven't seen since you know high school. But um, <clears throat> but basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, create a series of macros, if you will, that help reproduce this. Uh, workflow that is pretty common in transportation engineering and what I'm talking about is when we want to develop a highway alignment uh, for for a roadway project and I, I've already kind of covered this in one of the other videos I've done but I'll, I'll hit on it again here uh, it, it is that we want to kind of rough in the structure of the alignment using these straight lines uh, that we call back tangents um, you see that I've created them as construction lines because they because that's exactly what they are. They're they're there as reference lines. They're not intended to be a part of the final horizontal alignment itself, but they're there for uh, metrics and for um, design purposes. So what I've done is I've created several back tangents, and you'll notice that they are lined up on the straight sections of the roads. Uh, the starting point of each tangent is coincidentally constrained at the ending point of the previous, so I can move them with just the drag of the point. Now what I would want to do then is I would want to start drawing out my curves by simply doing something like that and then pick the endpoint of the curve and the uh, adjacent back tangent and tangentially constrain and again I demonstrated this in another video so I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail on that here um, and and then basically do that for all of my curves and then draw then and then just use a regular uh, tangent line uh, to connect the endpoints of the of the separate curves with a straight tangent section in between them. Um, now, there's a couple problems with doing this manually. Uh, it's kind of tedious. First off, because you have to draw a curve and then you have to apply two tangents to each endpoint into the adjacent tangent back tangents. But also, if you draw them a little bit wrong, uh, if they're a little bit askew, you know, I, you kind of saw it happen there. Is that it can make the it can make the tangents jump. Uh, or it could create uh, entirely unpredictable results, which might be, as far as the solver is concerned, a correct solution. But in terms of someone doing a um, doing a horizontal alignment, it's 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 painfully and obviously wrong. So, in order to uh, mitigate that issue, what I've done is I've I've been focused on trying to develop a series of functions uh, intended to help prepare this uh, to make to make this whole process go simpler. So rather than draw out the curve and tangentially constrain the endpoints to the back tangents as I just showed, rather you just pick two back tangents where you want your curve to be placed and this function here, uh, this, this button here, the second X on the right, uh, will generate a single center curve. Uh, and you'll notice that the back tangents didn't move at all and that my tangent uh, ten, tangent constraints are applied automatically. Now the reason why that works out so well is because I'm doing an awful lot of linear geometry. I'm examining these two tangents determining and determining uh, the sweep angle and the start angle and uh, exactly where those radius points exist on the back tangent so that when it actually draws that curve it draws it already tangent to the back tangents. Um, so that basically when the solver applies the back tangents it really should have very little math to have to do it shouldn't have to be doing any guessing at all I want to make the solver work as little as possible here to help um, uh, eliminate or uh, the possibility of it coming up with a I, I won't say a wrong solution but at least an undesirable one so that's that's the whole point of doing that uh, first off to, to control uh, solver variability and second just to make the whole process easier um, and so you see I can very quickly and easily start to lay out the curves for a roadway. Now the nice thing about using this back tangent approach is that I have just reduced the uh, degrees of freedom so to speak or, or the I suppose more exactly the number of control points that I have to use to uh, to manage this, this uh, geometry by one. In other words if I didn't use these back tangents I would have to lay out these single center curves and connect them with tangent lines in between. And in order to change the shape of this, of, uh, for example, if I wanted to adjust the position and shape of this curve, I would have to deal with three points, the two endpoints and the center point. But with back tangents, I've taken my two endpoints and I've tangentially constrained them to the back tangents. So these two points no longer matter. 
So now the only points that I have to worry about if I want to change the shape and position of this curve is the center point, which controls my radius, and what's called the point of intersection, the point at which the two tangents converge. So I can sit here and I just adjust these two tangents, or adjust that PI, maybe just reduce my radius just a little bit, push my PI back up, and you see that it takes much less effort then to arrive at an optimal solution by having to adjust only two points instead of three. Now, um, the one thing I haven't implemented, and there's actually two, two things left that I would like to implement on horizontal alignments, uh, and one I'm working on right now, and that is basically applying a tangent, a white tangent line that will, basically I will connect this, click on this back tangent, and then pick another function over here, and it will take, and it will basically take a white tangent line like that, and then just tangentially constrain them to the endpoints of the curves. Uh, and basically by doing that, I create a continuous alignment then made up of, of white lines um, and and I don't have these gaps that are filled in by these construction lines. So that's one fe feature that, uh, one more feature that I'm working on right now. The other one is to implement Abdullah's um, block constraint. Uh, this constraint right here, it works fantastically well. Uh, I absolutely love it. And so what I want to do is I want to apply block constraints by default to the back tangents and then uh, implement a, a drag handler such that whenever a, a back tangent is selected or a, or a, a vertex is selected uh, the block constraints on the adjoining geometry are released so that that geometry can be moved but all the other geometry remains fixed or blocked so that so that uh, it it of course doesn't change. The other advantage to that is that it increases computational efficiency by blocking those tangents it basically removes them from the equation and the solver doesn't have to do any math on that so it actually it speeds up uh, it's, it speeds up the uh, workflow a little bit because then the system becomes more responsive uh, to user interaction by blocking the constraints or blocking the geometry that uh, really should not be considered a part of um, part of the modification. So anyway, once I get those two things implemented, um, then I'm gonna, then I, I plan on start bringing in LiDAR data, which I've already got, and seeing how I can take, um, just take a 2D uh, horizontal alignment like this and project it on the surface of a LiDAR, of a LiDAR terrain to create, um, to create a vertical profile. Uh, so that's, that's where I'm at right now. Um, things are going well they're just not going very quickly <laughs> uh, but it's it's really encouraging and the support that uh, supp the support I've been getting in the free cab forum has just been f fantastic uh, so I really want to thank you guys uh, for the help uh, that you've been given and uh, I really I really appreciate it